I have some construction work going on outside, so I apologize if the microphone picks this up. However, I haven't uploaded a video about Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. Honestly, I'm burnt out on making YouTube videos. It's been quite hard to even think of ideas or write scripts or do anything relating to it, so I apologize for the lack of content. However, you guys really should play Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. And I plan on completing the game in its entirety. Like, completely, completely. We're talking platinum trophy kind of completion. After completing one of the Vengeance routes and playing the game for like 50 hours, I decided to call it quits on Shin Megami Tensei 5 for now. I had an absolute blast playing this game. This game improved on everything that Shin Megami Tensei 5 had flaws with, especially in terms of gameplay. One of the best features about Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance is that you can save anywhere. So if there's this boss or you think you're gonna get wiped by an enemy in the field, you can just save. You don't have to go back to the ley line found anymore. You can just save. And that saved my ass so many times while I was playing this game. And it was refreshing. I get the difficulty in only restricting saves to the ley line found or specific locations. Like in other games, I am looking at you Resident Evil, however, this was a good change in an RPG because, frankly, Shin Megami Tensei is one of the only games that still does this. And it's kind of disorientating going from I can save anywhere to I have to plan out everything strategically and I can't just have fun. And then when you die, there's no like, oh, do you want to start again for the start of the battle? No, you just die. And then you could lose hours of progress because you're dumb and you forgot to save. Look, I know not all of us are geniuses. I have lost hours of my life to this franchise and not being able to save anywhere. So that was a really good change. Another really good thing about Shin Megami Sensei 5 Vengeance is the demon horn. You get to talk to your demons and they give you free stuff. Not only do they give you free stuff, but they can level up their stats depending on how long you've been with them. And this encourages you not to just fuse off your demons all the time. I actually ended up having Heyatara on my team and he is still on my team. He is almost level 150. This is the first time I've ever done this with a demon. And now I invested all of my stats in him and he's basically invincible. And honestly, he pulled me through the game. I used him in the final boss fight. Witness me is so strong. And then attacks just miss and they lose all their turns. It's great. I feel like in a lot of other Shin Megami Tensei games, you can't really do this. Or you're discouraged from doing something like this. Because you should be fusing your demons off and getting stronger demons. But with essence, incense, and what have you, you can do whatever you want with whatever demon. And that that is such a good feature. I praise you, Atlas, for making that feature better. Now, obviously, we have the new story. New story's great. I loved it. My only personal complaint about Vengeance's story is the lack of character development with Dazai. But if you just play normal Shin Megami Tensei 5, he gets a lot of screen time, so it doesn't really matter. But Vengeance was a really solid refresher. It made me feel like I was kind of playing a different game, especially because there are different things with this route that I don't want to spoil if people haven't played it. But I assume by now a lot of you who watch my channel have. But we want to be safe on the off chance that somebody who doesn't watch me normally is watching this right now. Another thing that Vengeance does really well is exploration and emphasize exploration, especially with the addition of the rails. It felt like I needed to explore every corner of the world and that it had a lot more to offer than it originally intended in the original release of Shin Megami Tensei 5. So while we were all still using the same maps as the original game, there was new things, new paths, items, demons, subquests, you name it. And a lot of these could be found through the use of the rails. Now there's a big topic of conversation with Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance is, is it a cash grab? And I personally don't believe it's just a cash grab. Obviously, there was time constraints with Shin Megami Tensei 5. I know that's hard to believe. But the developers had a lot of issues learning how to use Unreal Engine, then COVID, and then they had to release the game at some point, especially given they'd announced it in 2017. So this caused some things to get scrapped. And not only did the release of this game 
see those things through. It also released a multi-platform, which is the biggest thing. If you're buying it on Switch twice, I can kind of see the reasoning that Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance might be a cash grab. But ultimately, I bought it on PlayStation 5, so I have a new experience on a different system, which to me is completely fine, given the quality of the game as well. If Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance was really bad, it was a really bad port, and nothing worked, then I'd be complaining that it might be a cash grab. But it's not. So, your old pal resident doesn't think that it's just a cash grab. Speaking of the PlayStation 5, the game looks beautiful on the system. The Switch version pales in comparison. It is night and day. And usually I don't really talk about graphics, because to me the gameplay is more important. But playing the game at a higher frame rate and a higher resolution, especially when you love the series so much, it just hits different. And I looked at footage from the Switch version again after playing it on the PlayStation 5, and I'm just sitting there thinking, I would not want to play this game on that system again. I don't necessarily mind playing games on the Nintendo Switch, especially because of the portable aspect to it. But ultimately, if something's going to run better and I'm mostly going to be at home, I would rather just play it on something else. And for me, my weapon is the PlayStation 5. And that's about it. There honestly isn't too much else to say without doing a deep dive analysis into Shin Megami Tensei 5, but I guarantee that other Shin Megami Tensei YouTubers who are not burnt out with the franchise, well, not burnt out with the franchise, just burnt out about talking about it on the internet, I put a lot of effort into some of my videos, and when I see them not do well, it kind of just hurts. Especially that was uh, my last video, which I did work really hard on, and then it kind of just flopped. Though in saying that, I do love my audience, the people who come back and watch all my videos, comment supporting me. Without you guys, I wouldn't even make videos in the first place. So I'm not going away forever, just... Expect there to be really, really long gaps, and maybe, maybe I might start talking about something else to help with the burnout. But anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Please let me know what you thought about Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance in the comments section down below. And with that all being said and done, my name is Res Unleashed, the resident who did this completely script free. And hopefully the construction noises aren't too bad. I forgot to say, I unleash this out into the world. And I will catch you all next time.